Louisiana. From its iconic cities to the swamps of Acadiana, its geography is just as diverse as the people that live there. To this day, family is at the core of who we are, and one of the things we love to do is share. As the rainy Cajun, I might be what you consider a Louisiana expat. Now living in the Seattle area, one of my missions in life has been to share my culture and introduce more people than ever to the place that I still call home. So grab your favorite beverage, find a spot to sit back and relax. The next episode begins now. All right, welcome to episode 111 of the Rainy Cajun Podcast. This week we'll be ranking Cajun Spice products testing your knowledge of New Orleans institutions, and bringing you more of Boudreaux's Southern News in our BS News segment. So let's get started. Uh, Growing up as a kid in Southern Louisiana, we really didn't have anything called Cajun Spice to add to our foods. It wasn't until the late 80s that a little green canister came out and it started to appear on shelves at the grocery store. With a name that was pretty hard to pronounce, even if you were a local, uh, unless you were living in Acadiana, you just tack to approach, yeah, right? So, and of course, I'm referring to this guy here, Tony Sashrays. Um, of course, which a lot of people now have no problem pronouncing. But um, when when we were when we saw this appear you know of course i you know it's like wow this is really good stuff um and then since that time cajun seasoning has appeared virtually everywhere around the world in one form or another uh, but it's often ways used in ways that most people from the south would not call true cajun cajun pizza cajun fries popcorn chips. None of that is Cajun. Now, don't get me wrong. It tastes good, but there's no such thing as any of this stuff. Look, it's not to say that adding Cajun spices to any dish doesn't liven it up. It almost certainly does, but in my line of thinking, if the dish didn't originate with the Cajuns of Louisiana, it ain't Cajun, period. End of story. All right, with that out of the way, This week, I wanted to feature some seasonings that I like adding to my cooking. If you're from, if you're in the South, most most of these are easy to get. And if not, you may need to do some sleuthing to find them. But almost always, you'll be able to find them at Walmart.com or Amazon, wherever you're, uh, wherever you like to shop. And then, you know, inevitably what will happen here is people say, well, what about hot sauce? All right. First of all, there are hot sauces all over the place from all different areas of the country. And, you know, truth be told, that could be a whole show in and of itself. And by the time you get through, you ever watch the hot ones uh, on YouTube? I think they do 10. 10 hot sauces. And by the, it's actually comical to watch. If you haven't seen it, you got to see it. Guy gets a bunch of wings lays it out in front of a celebrity and tries to conduct an interview with the celebrity while the celebrity is eating uh, progressively spicier chicken wings with the different sauces that they have. And by the time they get to one in particular, I remember uh, swear words start flying and, you know, people are tearing up and people want to throw up and blah, blah, blah. So (laughs) truth be told, um, that could be an episode, and, and maybe we get in 10 bottles of different Louisiana hot sauce before we were like, okay, I can't taste a thing. It's like wine tasting or any other kind of tasting. You can cleanse your palate, but it gets to the point where your stomach just can't handle it. So that aside, you know, we're we're going to uh, take this methodically, and I'm only doing five spices today. I'm sorry, I'm doing four spice. No, I got five. Plus, I've got something a little extra that um, I found in the uh, cupboard today that I wanted to talk about because I think it's essential to Cajun cooking. 
All right, so before we get through this, though, I, I want to introduce you to a new game that we'll be playing weekly on the Rainy Cajun. It's called Cluedat, and it's available on NOLA.com as well. Like anything on this show, however, we'll probably be making some tweaks, and I wanted to give credit to the folks at NOLA.com for coming up with this daily series. Ours is a little bit harder, though, since I won't reveal how many letters are used in the answer, whereas on their website, they do. And it's uh, it's like crossword, but with trivia mixed in. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and we, we will just, you know, the way it's going to work, it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to give you four clues throughout the show. And each clue will get progressively more informative. But the first clue is going to be super vague. And if you can get this, you, you got to pat yourself on the back. So we're calling this Clue Dat. And of course, we got to have some accompanying music for this. All right. And once you think you know the answer, after I give you these clues, we're going to start with the first clue and then we're going to go back to the show and then we'll come back throughout the show and go through the rest of the clues. So if you think you've got that answer, Go ahead and make sure to email me at cluedat at rainycage.com. And the first person to answer, I'll give a huge shout out to on and the answer uh, to on the, on the next episode. Um, and who knows, there may be some prizes down the road as a result of winning this. All right. So today, clue number one. You'll remember their clocks. Now this has specifically to do with New Orleans, just so you know, but the first clue is you'll remember their clocks. If you know that answer, email me right now. Uh, again, clue dad at rainycaging.com. All right, we'll come back and do the other clues throughout the show. All right, and then also, if you don't mind uh, liking and subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. It helps support the channel. And while we don't have any sponsors, this is something, this, it's nice to have people uh, you know, chime in and and, um, and also subscribe to get the latest updates. Okay, so we'll come back to clue that later on in the show. All right, so let me get back here and we'll talk about our spices. All right, let's see. We're going to go. So here's how I decided to do the spices this week. I mean, I can sit there and lick my hand and do this and, you know, and taste the different spices. The problem with that is what you can imagine. Um, it, my skin doesn't really offer any complimentary flavoring. I mean, maybe it does. Uh, our daughter's hamster seems to think so. But um, when you're eating these spices under normal circumstances, you're usually sprinkling it on something. So what I have today are good old hush puppies. These are hush puppies that I air fried just a little bit earlier. And then I've got my seasoning. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to rate these on three different traits. We're going to rate them on overall flavor, heat, and then, of course, saltiness. Um, all of those things play a factor in how it enhances or detracts from the food you're putting it on. Okay, so the first one that we're going to do is a good old standby, the Tony Sachets. Now, I, I really do enjoy this seasoning, and and to you know, truth be told, this is uh, this is kind of the granddaddy of Cajun seasoning. Um, you can find this in most grocery stores throughout the country. Um, it really just if if you can't ask your grocer, chances are you can find it. Um, I know that Alta's here in uh, Seattle does carry it, and a couple of other uh, uh, grocery store outlets also carry it. So look for this one. It is kind of the de facto standard. Um, they make a bunch of different versions of this. The green is the original. And 
it's also uh, probably got the most salt. Now, one of the things about the, the Cajun spices is they all kind of base themselves around similar ingredients. Matter of fact, I, I think uh, I was talking with a relative not too long ago about doing a comparison between the different spices. Their answer was, well, they're all going to kind of taste the same, don't you think? And you would think so. Turns out, not so much. So this one has base ingredients, salt, red pepper, black pepper, uh, a chili powder, and then garlic, and then some, uh, well, silicon dioxide to keep things from caking. And we do see in one of the, uh, the samples that I have today, it does cake because it doesn't contain anything to prevent the caking. And it does happen with the moisture up here in the Seattle area. You know, it is what it is. Uh, it will cake a little bit more quickly. So, all right, this is Tony Sachet's. And let's see here. So what I did is I took some of our mayo. You may remember the mayonnaise from the roast beef po' boy episode uh, called Cupy. And it's in this uh, bottle that is kind of uh, almost like a figure shape with a red cap on it. It's a, it's a Japanese mayo. I really like it. I prefer it to almost every other mayo that I've tried. So if you can find it, great. I know you can get it online. Sometimes you can get it at Costco. Um, certainly in areas with higher Asian population concentrations, it's much easier to get. So uh, so I've got my, I made myself a little bit of must, uh, sorry, not mustard, uh, mayo with the seasoning. So it's about a half teaspoon of seasoning and, and a full teaspoon of mayo. Uh, so basically it's a two to one ratio. And this is my dipping sauce for each and every one. So let's go ahead and try this. And I, and I will ad fully admit that this stuff tastes great on just about anything. Okay, first thing you notice right out of the gate, it does enhance the flavor. Um, sorry, the, who scheduled the LSU game during my podcast? But LSU just went up, by the way, in case you're following along. Saltiness comes out a lot with this sauce. Um, the heat is on the back end. And I get, I definitely get the, 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 the different flavorings. The chili powder is there. Um, salt, as I mentioned. As a matter of fact, just so you know, they do make, like I said, they do make a low sodium version of this. Um, serving size is a quarter teaspoon. And within a quarter teaspoon, of course, zero carbohydrates and zero protein, uh, but 350 milligrams of sodium. So use it sparingly because uh, you, you, we all have limits. And uh, depending upon what you did to your body when you were young, um, you may find that maybe some of these are too salty for you. All right, next one. Slap your mama. Now, slap your mama uh, is kind of uh, became popular in the mid to late 90s. Um, it was an alternative to Tony Sachet's. This is uh, normally you would see this in red, um, the but it's uh, this particular version is a low sodium version. Uh, my son bought this for me when he was down in Baton Rouge recently, thinking of his dad and not consuming too much sodium. So same thing here. Um, this one's a quarter teaspoon, but. The sodium content is just about a hundred milligrams, so two thirds less. So my expectation for something like this with Slap Your Mama would be, um, it, it, it's going to be a little bit less salty on the front, um, but hopefully some of the flavors will pop a little bit more instead of it just being inundated with salt. All right. So we're going to do our little dipper here. There we go. 
This is my highly scientific tasting method. Okay. Immediately, oh wow, I need some water. Immediately, what I'm tasting is the seasoning itself, rather than the sodium. And just, I can't wait to talk about the salty salt water thing happening in New Orleans a little bit later. But um, this is a lot more flavor on the front end. And it does really enhance, you know, normally you eat hush puppies with butter, right? Butter's kind of plain. I mean, don't get me wrong. We did biscuits last weekend and the chicken biscuits with all that butter on top was amazing. But this is going to be a little bit different in terms of uh, the flavor profile because we're using mayo, which is kind of a binding agent. But yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. But I am going to grab some water. Just in case, so I don't dry out here. Okay. So, let's move on here. And let's see, we'll go to... Ah, another one that's popped up recently uh, is the Cajun Ninja. And this is his Pia sauce. It's not sauce, seasoning. And same thing goes here. Um, 300 milligrams sodium, you know, zero carbs, zero protein. Um, it it uh, has very similar ingredients. Where is the ingredient list on here? Huh. Okay, here we go. Salt, cayenne pepper, black pepper, garlic, paprika, chili, uh, rice concentrate to prevent caking. So I like that already. It's not silicon dioxide, which is kind of nice. All right. And so we'll test that out here. Get my little dish. Hmm. And it's interesting, the, the mayo as it sat with the seasoning has kind of really altered the color. So the the sauce is very much the color of the seasoning now. Okay. So, similar to the Tony Sacheres, get a lot of salt up front. Um, I think that it's it's got a bit more flavor than the Tony Sacheres in terms of the, the, the heat and the Cajun notes to it. But... In terms of similarity, I'd say that those two are very close to each other. Now, um, I know that they've curated this recipe, so I'm going to give them props for doing that because sometimes creating these seasonings, especially in mass, it, it, it is a, a bit of a, it's a project. And, um, and I know he and his wife are in this together. So kudos to you guys because this, uh, this is some good stuff. This is some really good stuff. I could probably eat this for quite some time. Okay, but I am definitely going to need more water to come up here. All right. This guy, so Cajun Ninja, he's on, um, he's got his own channel on YouTube. <clears throat> this other guy I'm about to feature, he, he goes by the, the name uh, Stale Cracker. And Stale Cracker... <laughs> Um, I, I know a little bit about his back history, but until I have a chance to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not going to really say anything, uh, but he is a character. Um, he is his YouTube. I mean, if you, if you looked up Cajun in the dictionary, this guy's picture would be right there because he looks the part, he acts the part, um, and some of the episodes that I've watched of his on YouTube are somebody like me, um, are a little bit, make me a little bit queasy, you know, just the catching of alligators, garfish. I remember the episode he did with frogs. Um, 
and then he was clean, cleaning the frog and he just sliced the head right off and the head sitting on the cutting board looking almost straight at the camera just with the surprised look on its face and it was kind of hard to watch so you know I, I wasn't a fan of that but let's uh let's go ahead and try out his seasoning this is called Cajun two-step and Cajun two-step uh So way less sodium, 170 milligrams. So it's about half of the others. Um, and his ingredient list is a bit more involved, so I'm not going to read that off to you. If you're interested in this stuff, um, go to Stale Cracker and, uh, and look it up. You can also find, I know you can find this stuff online. Um, oops, what am I doing? Okay. So this is... You can see the color of the, um, the mayo at this point. Hmm. This one, the salt is definitely there, but I'm I'm getting more of like a the the green vegetable components that you find in these sauces that are often dried um this is but this is good this is good um man uh just the right amount of heat decent amount of saltiness not too bad but definitely um that that is a that's a good one. Now I've tasted these all solo, and to be honest with you, the Cajun two step seasonings by themselves, I felt were too far outside the what would be considered a, a, a traditional Cajun seasoning or spice. But that said, um, when you mix it with the food, uh, it does create. Uh, it's a different flavor profile for sure. So then that brings me to my last seasoning, which is also by Stale Cracker. And this one is the Cajun Two Step. But if you see that on the yellow can down right here, here, I'll switch cameras here. It says fire. Okay. So there's a reason for that. Now looking at the the sauces side by side they they kind of look the same of course it's hard to pick that up on camera because this dish is not yellow but the lights are making it so this is a little bit deeper color uh, this is a white dish but anyway um, so this one's gonna have a bit more heat to it let's see Mm -hmm. So, a lot of flavor on the front end. A lot of, um, there's the heat, um, but it's it's not terrible. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, all these people are like, I don't like spicy food. You know what? Don't go into a Cajun restaurant or a New Orleans restaurant and say, do you make anything that's not spicy? Just turn away go to some generic food place because i mean this is this is at the heart of who we are We're not necessarily over the top but spice is a is an es essential ingredient and it's definitely something that is uh it's in it's it's just an element it's an element of the seasoning itself but mm, i am digging that that heat oh yeah oh yeah man that's good stuff. Okay, so, but before my face shrivels up, all the sodium, uh, by the way, I wonder how much more sodium, or is there more sodium? Because there's definitely a lot of heat. Uh, no, so the fire seasoning, it just has a bit more heat to it. Not a bit more, it has quite a, quite a bit more heat to it. But I think it's, um, 
I think if, if I had to rate all of these in terms of the flavor alone, no saltiness or low saltiness, um, but it doesn't have a lot of heat. Um, I would say the Sloppy Mama is kind of up towards the top. <clears throat> Followed not too far behind by the Cajun two-step with the fire. And then the others kind of fit into the similar category. They're all good. Don't get me wrong. They're all very good. I just find that um, I'm, I'm more interested in flavor than just kind of like a being blasted in the face with, with salt. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm more sensitive. Once I get up there in my gears. Okay. So let's uh, talk. I, I did mention I have one other thing I want to talk about. This um, here is, if, uh, here I'll switch cameras here. This is the Cajun Trinity. All right. So this is a blend of onions, bell pepper, and celery, all dried. And so if you're making something real quick and you don't want to cut up a bunch of celery and onions and bell peppers, um, the only thing I think it's missing really is, yeah, there's no garlic in here, but there's, it says granulated red and green bell peppers, onions, celery, spices, and sea salt. So it's got a lot of the elements in there. And this I will just do this with now it's ooh, okay gonna have to vacuum later um this is um let me see if i can get it a little bit closer you can see hopefully come on there we go you can see it's got some flakes in it right and so those flakes that's the granulated stuff So this is like Cajun seasoning with the vegetables all rolled in the one. So if you're in a in a pinch, you want to make something real quick like a red beans and rice dish or etouffee or gumbo or something like that, here's all of your Trinity in a, in a can. And this is legit. This is um, made in Louisiana. Uh, bu 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 New Iberia, actually, Louisiana. So says blended impact for Cajun blend and blends and seasoning. So there you go. So look for this. Um, I have not seen this anywhere um, like at the store, even Alta's here in, in the Seattle area. I haven't seen anything like this, but it is really good. Okay. Time to move on to clue two of clue that. All right, so the first one was, you'll remember their clocks. Okay, you'll remember their clocks. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit easier, and here's clue two. It's originally the Bank of New Orleans. Now, for most of you, especially those of you who grew up in New Orleans, you should know this answer right away. But I'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see who, who knows what it is. Okay. Shall we get on with the rest of the show? I think we shall. All right. It's time... For Boudreaux's Southern News on the BS Network, where we cover all the news that may or may not be fit to print. So what we've got here da, 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 is let's let's take a look see here. And early voting begins today. Get out and make your voice heard. Uh, I am largely apolitical online. Those of you that know me personally, I am not. <laughs> but uh, I remember in sixth grade, Miss Flanagan, who I hope gets to watch this episode. Uh, she's 
she's back in Louisiana. She had moved away to Oregon, not too far from here, actually. And um, she moved back. But I remember her saying in her class, um, there are certain things you don't talk about in public. And, and she mentioned politics. And as a fifth grader or a sixth grader, you're like, well, what's the big deal? Politics. And having lived in the Pacific Northwest for 20 years now, I now know that people uh, are very much um, intense when it comes to political discussions. I have a friend who I've known for quite some time now. She um, She's in broadcast media and she left uh, corporate uh, media to start her own YouTube channel or her own, yeah, her own show basically. And she's never looked back, but she, and she is probably the, the most centrist of people that I know. She, uh, she had a hat made, uh, that said, uh, make, I think it was, uh, make common sense again, or something along those lines, you know, red hat, white lettering, like we've seen other people wear. And, uh, man, the people up here, the snowflakes, especially freaking flipped out. And I'm like this over a hat. So now Miss Flanagan, I understand why you said don't talk about politics because people will just lose their minds off of it all right so back to it so the salt water uh saga actually kind of continues um you know the one of the interesting things about the salt water is that if you go and look at it um the timeline is different from last week uh, now they're saying well into November and probably around Thanksgiving time, which might be good for brining turkey. Just saying, you know, silver lining. But um, I don't actually recall this because I, I was, what, 15 at the time and I had my mind other places. But as recently as 1988, there were elevated salt water levels in the Mississippi that taxed the, the stations, the processing plants. And um, so uh, this is not a new occurrence. Um, there was also an incident in 1936. So, you know, every 80 years or so with one maybe in between, you might see something like this. Yeah. And and then, you know, they they clearly are, they were gearing up to do all of these expensive pipelines to get fresh water and all this other garbage. And at the end of the day, I don't think it really mattered. Um, here's an interesting t statistic, and this was actually, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting a, uh, uh, a health and hospitals administrator from 1988, that it, um, right now, you know, they're, they're talking about maybe 300, 300 parts per million with sodium. And it said, and this particular individual, uh, Jay Reed, in 1988 said, even if it got up to 1,000 parts per million, the water would have less salt than a box of Popeye's fried chicken. Okay, so that gives you an idea of uh, how intense it would need to get before things got out of hand. Um, and with the timeline pushed out and there's discussion about whether or not it's even ever going to reach New Orleans, was this a lot of to do about nothing? I don't know. It Was it a distraction over some other issue going on? Like them doing City Hall. I said it was apolitical, but this is not politics related because many mayors have tried to do this. They I don't know if you guys saw, but uh, they're trying to move City Hall out of the building that it, that currently exists in downtown New Orleans to uh, Duncan Plaza across the street. $250 million was the initial projection, which um, I've been reading between the lines, and it's quite clear that that was just a number that somebody pulled out of their backside. And the reality is, and we know how this goes, no big contracts, uh, extended timelines, taxpayers pay way more than they ever expected, all this so that the members of City Hall could get a new building. And you kind of have to ask yourself, even if $250 million is accurate, quarter of a billion dollars, even if that's accurate, if you took the existing building that was built in the 50s and you perform 250 million dollars in upgrades you're telling me that that 
wouldn't work. Really? Yeah. So don't. <laughs> I said this last week, and I'll say it again. Don't get me started. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny actually. Um, you can see off here, uh, Simon of New Orleans. Uh, he he got in on the action this week, and I thought this was kind of funny. Um, he he definitely uh, played around with you know everybody's concerns and did his paintings. And actually, you know, you can see here uh, if I go. Let me go to the other camera here. Come on. You can see. Well, I got to take this graphic off, of course. You can see right there. That's one of his paintings. And I've got another one over here. So they're all over the place. Um, and we've got a Houdat one around here somewhere. I, I don't know where it is. But anyway, uh, he got in on the action too, which was kind of fun. Um, so then, uh, let's see. So, yeah, oh, by the way, if you're interested in Simon's stuff, uh, well, first of all, if you just go up and down Magazine Street in New Orleans, uh, there, his artwork's all over the place. I mean, it's all over the place. And his little studio is just right off of Magazine Street, kind of in the central area, Garden District. Um, really cool spot. And uh, he's a super nice guy. Uh, English is not his first language. Uh, he's actually French, I believe, French. Um, but he's he's lots of fun to talk to. And and uh, he outfitted uh, my past business, my brewery, with a lot of these paintings. And uh, yeah, he's just a cool guy. And it's super simple stuff, but it's iconic. It is very much iconic. Um, all right, so let's, you know what? Let's throw in another clue while we're at it because we're getting up in time here. Wow, we're already 40 minutes in. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go back. All right, so we got our two clues. You'll remember their clocks and originally the Bank of New Orleans. Clue number three. The clock that you may remember is on an historic building on St. Charles Street in New Orleans. Getting any closer to the answer? Have it already? Make sure to email me, bluedad at marinicajun.com. All right. Thanks, Cousin Dave. Okay, let's go ahead and... We will go on with the news here because there's more to discuss. Um, okay, we're going to transition to sports because nothing gets me more worked up uh, and hotter than the lights in the studio is sports. And right now, like I said, LSU's on. They're now up 33-32 to 32 with an extra point attempt. And what the hell happened with Ole Miss last week? I mean, seriously, what happened? They, they had that game... Not in hand. I mean, that that game is always the Magnolia Bowl is always a very uh, close event. But they had that game. I mean, they could have won it, and it just seemed like the defense got gassed and they fell apart. Um, and I, I don't know why. Even with this game, oh, they just got a two point conversion, so now it is thirty five thirty two. So. Um, it seems like the defense, and at the start of this game, I'm like, oh, God, here we go again, because they started out, Mizzou went uh, up 25-7, and LSU's been slowly clawing their way back. Very methodical approach to it. Um, so that that's uh, kind of interesting, because the Saints try and do that, too. Speaking of the Saints, <sighs> okay, so... There, I have two things to talk about here, but I, I want to interject um, a little bit more news and have a, a few more bits of info before I get in on my soapbox regarding the Saints. Uh, and that is, what happened to this thing called the dome field advantage? You remember that? I know this was something that kind of popped up in the... Uh, 90s when 
Bobby Hebert and and the uh, the Dome Patrol, the defense were just. I mean, it really looked like we had every year. It looked like we had a shot at the playoffs, and even if we got into the, I remember when we were just wanting to get into the playoffs. We weren't even thinking beyond game one, which was clear because we almost never won beyond game one. But, you know, this used to be this thing where it got noisy enough in the Superdome that it would distract and you'd have false starts. That doesn't really exist anymore. And I, I mean, I know why, because you're getting less attendance. People are trying to drop their tickets left and right. So... You know, an interesting fact, you know, they talk about the dome field advantage. The Saints have actually lost the last 14 of their 18 games while played in the Superdome. Think about that. There's no advantage now. It, do it doesn't exist. So, you know, and, and then you throw on top of that that the Bucks swept the Saints last season. Uh, the Saints are 1-5 under Dennis Allen versus the Bucks. They have our number. And they're not that good, but they have our number. We haven't scored a TD since uh, Shahid in the Green Bay game. I mean, that just it gives you an idea of how badly we got shut down last week. Even Bobby Abear, you know, Bobby Abear, he uh, his nickname's the the Cajun Cannon, and he's on uh, WWL after the games. Um, he he said he wanted to give the game. Uh, game ball uh, to the fans for showing up for this garbage. That's a quote from him. So, <laughs> and, and I have to say that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get into it a little bit more, but, you know, we are a product, we are paying for a product that is not delivering, and there's often consequences associated with that. And, you know, we never seem to re really be able to, uh, seek the benefit of, of those consequences. We just have to bend over and take it. So, um, okay, so let's go on and talk about news local Seattle. Um, there, there's actually some things to discuss. Uh, Richard Sherman, which a lot of NFL fans will remember as being the outspoken cornerback for the Seahawks, and uh, Cam Chancellor. Uh, just opened up a sports bar in Bellevue called Legions, and uh, they're soft opening this week. And I believe they'll well, they haven't announced a grand opening as far as I can tell right now. But um, they were, you know, they've got they just they signed the paperwork back in the early part of the summer, and you can see they already have a pretty sizable staff. So um, if you get a chance, I would go over there and, uh, well, first, uh, this week, while they're in soft open mode, they're only going off of, uh, people calling ahead. So, um, just keep that in mind, but this is designed to be a soul food style restaurant, which will be really interesting. Um, what is soul food to Cam Chancellor and... Richard Sherman, Richard Sherman, who went to Stanford. Who knows? Um, this will be really interesting. I, I mean, obviously, when you hire professional chefs, they figure that stuff out for you, and you just put your name behind it and money. But um, that's that's happening in Bellevue uh, this week as we speak. Um, and then we've got, let's see here. Uh, oh, well, this isn't really, this is actually local to New Orleans. Um, you guys may be familiar with a gal, uh, Lauren, uh, who runs the uh, Flirty Girl chain of kind of specialty boutique stores. Um, she has, um, she started her business uh, on the streets of the French Quarter doing like fun teas and stuff like that, and it's burgeoned into... A, a very large business and she's she's got a lot of her stuff online at, uh, I think it's flirtygirl.net so f l e u r t y girl um and and I have one of their hats here and I've got a few other little items that I I get from them but uh Christmas ornaments all that stuff they've got t-shirts and outfits and all these things and while they're not a sponsor of the show um 
they do have some very interesting merchandise that you can buy that's not the NFL ex, uh, extortionary rates for buying uh, gear, uh, showing that you're a fan. And she's got some really cool stuff for women. Um, so, you know, take a look at flirtygirl.net. Um, I, I think she's she's got some good Halloween stuff in right now. And then, of course, it'll come Christmas and, and the holidays. So, um all right, and then let's see, we're gonna go on here. And doo -doo -doo. oh yeah. How did I forget this? Even though I'm about to rip the Saints to shreds in my editorial, um <laughs> if you're still watching the Saints, I mean they are at a failing grade right now. Um if you're watching them, uh we have a small little group that uh, it's actually been around for 10 plus years that we put on pause during the pandemic. And then uh, some of our folks that were part of the original group um, moved away and they're no longer local. But we were looking for a place. We originally had the games on at the brewery, um, but now we, there's the pump house in Bellevue and if you haven't been there before it's they've got TV screens out the yin yang they will put on uh, just about any sport for you as long as you know there's enough people interested but at the same time they've got a full bar their breakfast is really good so if you have an early game that you're following definitely recommend uh, hitting up the pump house and that's where we meet and so on an early game for us which is noon central time start 10 a.m pacific time start we'll usually roll in about 9 30 or so and just kind of get situated and then um watch the game there and they're very accommodating super nice people so uh please join us uh we would love to get more people um into these these uh these meetings or these meetups because honestly i've made so many friends over the years uh, of just fellow Saints fans. They're not necessarily even expats, just fellow Saints fans. Um, and it, and it's, a, it's a cool environment. It really is. And so you get a chance to see me and a few other folks and commiserate. You know, it's a, it is a, uh, it, it, it's something fun to do on a Sunday. And then you still got the whole day ahead of you. Or if you want to sit and watch the Seahawks game or any other game, like I said, they've got a ridiculous amount of TVs. All right, so before we uh, have the last little bit here, let's go back to our Cludet segment. And this will be the last clue. All right, so obviously it is originally the Bank of New Orleans and joined with Hancock of Mississippi. So there's your four clues for this week's Cludat Trivia. Again, email me, cludat at rainycajun.com, and I will give you a huge sh shout out next week when we do this all over again, because uh, you deserve it. If you've made it this far, if you are completely clueless, just wait till next week and I will give you the answer. And next week's will be an even tougher challenge. So. Get ready for that. Brush up on your Louisiana history, your New Orleans history, uh, your celebrity knowledge from people down there. Um, this is uh, this is a great way to kind of reacquaint yourself with some information that you know, useful or not, it's it's part of who we are. So, okay. Speaking of that, the we got to talk about the Saints. We just have to. Um, with the Saints at 50% on the season, that, my friends, is a failing score. Even the wins have been called ugly. Now, is it time to dust off our brown paper bags? That remains to be seen. You know, we have, as fans, we've endured uh, essentially all different emotions with this team. 
And it had, really hasn't been since the Super Bowl where we could be proud of the team that uh, that represented us in the big show. Um, the Saints of the 80s were terrible. I mean, terrible. Um, and it took the club 40 years to actually go to the big show. 40 years from its inception. And we haven't been back since. And we've hit the playoffs a couple of times. And don't get me started on all the different things that have occurred. It's clear that uh, we have our work cut out for us forever hoping to make it back to the um to the big show. And what did you say, David? Oh, okay. I did not know that. Okay, well, Cousin David uh, threw in a little tidbit here. Uh, the University of South Alabama's new stadium is named after the clue, or named after the answer for the, uh, for the uh, clue dat this week. So I think, actually, let me see. Can I, can I do that? There we go. Look at that. I can even put your comments right there in front of me. And of course, that's too small. So I need to, yeah. One of our guys here calls it him big in it. There we go. All right. So let me get back up on my soapbox here. So. That we've been to the big show and we've kind of floundered since then. Uh, the Saints really haven't been taken seriously as a team, especially within the last five years. Why do we as fans put up with this? I mean, when you think about it, why do we spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars each year supporting an organization that's supposed to resent, represent the heart and soul of New Orleans and the region? and yet only delivers failure. Think about how many businesses you spend your money with who deliver crap. Do you keep working with them? Of course not. I know why. As a Saints fan, we are the eternal optimists. We believe that somehow the first 25% of the season won't dictate the remainder of the outcomes, and yet it almost always does. Maybe that's our own definition of insanity. The NFL wants to treat its product as a business, which means we're the customers. You know, think about that the next time you plunk down your hard-earned cash for a ticket, a jersey, or a TV subscription package. We are feeding a machine that doesn't care about us, our city, or our culture. And until the Saints organization begins to represent our region and city and holds itself truly accountable, not the BS lip service we hear from players, coaches, and management after a loss, we will never feel that pride we felt after our Super Bowl win. At least that's one thing that this team can never take away, and that's memories. All right, that's it for this week. Next week, uh, we'll be meeting with the folks from Camellia Beans. Yes, that red bean company and 18 other different varieties of beans on top of that. Um, we'll have more uh, news, uh, more BS news from uh, Boudreaux. And uh, if you have any interesting tips or information that I should be taking a look at to maybe include in the next show or successive shows, be sure to email me or just drop a comment here on uh, on Facebook or YouTube. That goes a long way towards me just kind of making sure everybody's engaged. And um, look for next week's topics to be announced by the end of this coming week because <laughs> everything changes so quickly that I, I want to include the most uh, recent information. Um, so one more time, real quick, just so you see, here's our clue dat. All right. 
And again, if you can like and subscribe, I would be eternally grateful. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out. And if you're so inclined, subscribe to the latest updates, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube. Um, I look forward to seeing y'all next week. Until then, take care of yourself.